Howdy y'all, thanks for being here. Today I'm going to sort of make a request video, but this is something that really interests me too. All of these major cities and old world cities interest me, but I had a request to find out some information about old world Baltimore. And I'm actually from the East Coast of the United States, so I've had the luxury of visiting Baltimore twice in my life. Uh, one of the trips was in high school and one was shortly after that. So I actually haven't been there for almost 10 years now. But I do remember there's quite an atmosphere when you visit Baltimore and you can really sense the history in the air. Now, when I went, I wasn't very familiar with this history, so I decided to familiarize myself with it. And I'm going to present the current narrative to you about the history of Baltimore. But essentially, this video is really just going to be about the most unique images that I could find. Now, they say that Baltimore really has a history that dates back almost 10,000 years. So we're going to talk about that. But first, I wanted to show you some of these artist depictions of Baltimore in the 17 and 1800s. You'll notice the land is full of these hills that are right next to each other. And they say that this area was occupied by Native Americans for many thousands of years. And this is Baltimore in the 1800s. You'll notice at the apex of the city, it's sort of a hill. And uh, on the top is a domed building with two pillars. And just remember that for later in the video, because I'm going to get into that and some details I found about that as well. But for right now, sit back, relax, pop a cola, and let's see what the current narrative has to say about old world Baltimore. So according to the current narrative, Baltimore was Native American occupied from as early as the 10th millennium BC. So as early as 12,000 years ago, there was humans occupying the area that is Baltimore. Now, this group of Native Americans, they say lived in one harmonious nation, and this became known as the Potomac Creek Complex. And this survived until roughly, they say, the early 1600s, when by that time, the Susquehannock Native Americans had taken over and began to populate Baltimore and the surrounding area. And they say the Susquehannock actually occupied all of Baltimore, including what is today the inner city of Baltimore. So I found that to be very interesting. Then the current narrative goes on to say in 1608, John Smith traveled 210 miles from Jamestown to explore and attempt to chart the land of Baltimore and the surrounding area. Then, in 1633, led by Lord Baltimore Cecil Calvert, a group of 140 English men, women, and children set off in a boat called the Ark to settle in Maryland and the greater Baltimore area. So after this time, you have this settlement of Englishmen in Baltimore, and they established the county of Baltimore in 1659. Then they say the city is fully mapped out by 1661, and the port of Baltimore is established by 1706. The narrative goes on to say the town of Baltimore is created in 1729, and the town is then enlarged in 1745. And then the narrative goes on to write that the Pennsylvania Dutch, aka the German Society of Maryland, is established in 1783. And with this, there is basically an onslaught of German immigrants coming to Baltimore. At this point, I want to discuss the Whetstone Point Peninsula. This is basically the entrance to the inner harbor of Baltimore. They say in this narrative that in 1796, a fort is constructed on this peninsula and this fort is aptly titled Fort Whetstone. However, this fort only lasts for two years and is in service from 96 until 97, when in 1798, um, it is torn down and Fort McHenry is built on top. Now, Fort McHenry is important for a lot of different reasons, especially to the history of the United States. First of all, Fort McHenry defended Baltimore Harbor during the War of 1812. And they go on to write that there was a storm flag that was constantly flying over Fort McHenry during the War of 1812, when on September 14th 
of 1814, a 30 foot by 42 foot garrison flag was raised over Fort McHenry and this was signaling the American victory over the British in the Battle of Baltimore. So this flag, this humongous flag would actually be the inspiration and this site would be the inspiration for Francis Scott Key to write Defense of Fort McHenry, which would later be renamed the Star Spangled Banner, and that is the national anthem of the United States of America. Francis Scott Key was in Baltimore at the time of the War of 1812, and he actually visually saw the raising of this flag and saw the celebration, and it inspired him to write this anthem of the nation. So I found that to be really, really interesting. Now, in the years after that, Baltimore continued to rapidly, rapidly grow. And by 1850, Baltimore was the second largest by population city in the entire United States. So that was the current narrative about the history of Baltimore. Now I'm going to get into more of the interesting photographs and things that I found. And first I want to talk about that domed building that I mentioned at the beginning of the video that is depicted in the artist rendition of Baltimore in the early 1800s. This domed building, which is labeled as a church or a cathedral, is one of the oldest and one of the largest in Baltimore. And as you can tell in that early artist rendition, it stood on top of a hill. This hill was known as Capitol Hill. And basically it gives off the vibe of an ancient tell or an ancient mound, or that somehow there was some sort of infrastructure below this building. And that's something interesting about Baltimore that I want to talk about. As I showed in a previous photograph, the population of Baltimore in the 1850s was the second largest in the entire United States. So you would think with all the advanced architecture and all the advancement of the society that we would have use of photography. But that's one thing about Baltimore that is a little bit different from a lot of these other old world cities that I've looked into. There are not many photographs of Baltimore from before the Great Fire of 1904. I did find a boatload of images of the Great Fire and the damage that it caused. And we're going to get into that because it's so interesting. But I did want to point out that this is the second largest city in the whole United States. But there is not a very good photographical evidence of what this city looked like before this fire. For some reason, there are not a lot of people taking photographs. And that's when we get back to this Capitol Hill area and this domed building that sat on top. The dome building itself resembles many of the churches and cathedrals in the Holy Land. It looks almost identical. So that was already sort of an interesting tell for me. Now what is written in the narrative, and this is the really juicy part about all of these details, is that there's actually underground passageways and underground tunnels and underground caverns that lead all throughout Baltimore and they all stem out of this Capitol Hill building and out of this Capitol Hill area. So essentially over time, different areas of Baltimore would have sink-ins and uh, the road or the land would basically cave in and these different ruins would get exposed that were buried and it would basically be these passageways that were connecting all of these different areas and they would all lead, they'd say, at least in the narrative, many of them would lead to dead ends, but some of them would lead to openings that they didn't know about until they followed these passages. 
So I found that to be really interesting that even in the oldest photographs and oldest artist depictions of Baltimore, you see this domed building with the two pillars that's very reminiscent of churches from the Holy Land. And then under this building, it's written that there's actually underground passages and underground caverns that lead all throughout Baltimore. And they're all from this ancient mound or ancient tell or basically just the hill that the city was built on. So I found that to be super interesting and I never heard about that at all before. So I thought I would share that with you. Now for the rest of this video, I'll chime in every once in a while with uh, certain thoughts and ideas about these photographs, but really I just wanna share these images with you. Mainly, I tried to get the oldest photographs that I could find. So this one right here was the oldest photograph of Baltimore, at least that I could find that was documented, and it said it was from 1846. So we're gonna keep trying to look at photographs like that and just let me know if anything in these images stands out to you. And we will talk a little more at the end of the video. Just like in a lot of these other old world cities that we talk about, you will see a lot of Masonic symbolism all around old world Baltimore. Next, I want to talk about this set of buildings right here. When I went to Baltimore, I actually ate in this Hard Rock Cafe. And if you've been to Baltimore, you're probably familiar with this part of the Inner Harbor. It is right by the National Aquarium and it's very popular. And while I ate here, I thought the building was amazing, but I had no idea that it actually used to be this power plant, this amazing red brick structure that has been standing on the pier and on the coast in Baltimore on the Inner Harbor for almost a century. Just really remarkable to see it in its original glory. And another example of how we repurpose these old world buildings and we start to forget the history about them. So I just wanted to show these photographs to you because I found them to be really glorious.
And thanks to the commenters in my other video I made about P.T. Barnum, who led me to this massive hotel that he built in Baltimore, Maryland. It was really interesting and it got me thinking and looking into the old world hotels and the preserved hotels in Baltimore. And one thing I noticed is a lot of them have these geometric patterns that appear all over the building and they also have these really unique and ornate fireplaces. So if you couldn't tell already, transportation was very important to the history of Baltimore. Not only did they have one of the largest harbors in all of the country, but they also needed a way to transport these goods that were imported through the harbor. And this is when you see the incorporation of the railway system all throughout Baltimore. You can find these awesome rail lines and the photographs of them and the tunnels that they created all throughout Baltimore. And basically throughout the 1800s, Baltimore was thriving in this area. Now, something I found really interesting, according to the narrative regarding the rail car in Baltimore, is in 1877, you actually have documentation of the first nationwide strike of any type of worker, and that is the rail workers of Baltimore striking against their cut wages. So I found that to be something really interesting and important to the history of transportation and the history of America. Now, besides the rail cars that were running on the fossil fuels, we also have documentation that says there were cable car systems running in Baltimore and also electric trolley systems running in Baltimore. Now, if you don't know about the cable car system, it's much like in San Francisco, where you have a long underground cable that's constantly being rotated by massive gears underneath the road. And as I mentioned previously in this video, we already have discussion of these underground tunnels and caverns that were running throughout Baltimore. So at the same time that we're discovering these caverns, we're also building underground tunnels to put in these conduit railway systems and these cable railway systems. And it's really interesting too, is that the system seemed to flourish up until the 1904 Great Fire. And then after the Great Fire, you basically have the old cable and conduit systems being dismantled. And that's when they began to use the overhead trolley system. But you really have these old world technologies and this fine antiqua tech being used in Baltimore up until the 1904 Great Fire.
Next, I want to talk about Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland. And first, we're going to look at the ground plan. And you can see that this was a massive complex of buildings. And when you look at the buildings, you'll find that the construction is rather questionable. And it's really important to talk about because these are buildings that predate the 1904 Great Fire in Baltimore. And these photographs of the original Johns Hopkins Hospital were actually kind of difficult for me to find. So it seems like the internet and different sources are flooded with the more modern renovated versions of this building but to find the original structure that has stood they say since 1889 it was a little bit more difficult now I just wanted to show these images to you because these buildings are very reminiscent of a lot of the other old world structures that we see all around the country and all around the world not only do we have Moorish architecture and Romanesque architecture, but we also have these octagonal buildings. And on the inside, they have very interesting sort of designs. Now, they all have vaulted ceilings. We're talking about ceilings that are 15 to 20 feet high. And they also have the large arched doorways that you, with one of your friends on your shoulders, could probably walk through. And it's just a really interesting design when they say that these buildings were built to be hospitals and they were built to house as many people as possible yet if you're talking about a use of space there's a lot of openness within these buildings and i just thought they were really interesting and they sort of lend to the old world construction Now we're going to get to the meat and potatoes of this video and that is the great fire of baltimore in 1904 and this fire as you can tell from that map basically wiped out multiple city blocks and from the photographs it appears it wiped out the majority of the city and if you don't know anything about the natural disasters or accidents that have occurred in almost every major city around the world today you're gonna learn and we're gonna start with baltimore now they say this was caused from a single warehouse and the fire basically spread throughout the city and it was unstoppable they couldn't stop this fire but from the photographs you could argue if someone didn't know any better that these images look like a war torn city but this is actually a accidental fire that naturally burned through all of these materials this wasn't advanced by anyone there wasn't extra fire set this is one singular fire that wiped out an entire city and as odd as that seems especially when you note that these old buildings were built with stone and brick these were not buildings that were built with steel we weren't necessarily using steel in our buildings or at least all of them quite yet and many of the buildings in baltimore as we've discussed stood from the mid 1800s and earlier yet this entire city that was stone and brick was entirely decimated by this fire and it's estimated that in 1904 currency there was a hundred to 125 million dollars in damage so in current money you can only imagine how much that is imagine if a city this large would have something like this happen today this is basically a disaster of unknown proportions and you would think that this couldn't happen in any other city but if you know anything about this historical research this actually happened in almost every major city around the country and around the world and in a lot of those other cities you'll find photographs just like these now i had to pry into some different areas 
to get these images and they were a little bit more difficult to find but these are some of the rarest images of Baltimore after the great fire so I just wanted to share them with you to show you all the damage that this fire was able to cause to all of these brick and stone buildings and you can see here you know these are the massive gears that were running the cable car system and different things of that nature and just all these old world sort of architecture styles that were all destroyed and after that the city became very different and it's just really hard to swallow and really hard to imagine but this is the current narrative that we have for baltimore So within a few years of the great fire that decimated Baltimore, we do see that Baltimore begins to rebuild and we do see awesome buildings begin to pop up once again. And one of my favorite ones and one of the buildings I've known about for a while, but I didn't really have a way to talk about it and I didn't actually know that I could locate some of these awesome images was this building right here. And this is the Bromo Seltzer building in Baltimore. And while this building still stands today and it's a historic site, um, one thing it does not have is the massive seltzer bottle that used to stand on top of this building. And this made it unlike really any other tower that I've seen before. And luckily, I was able to locate a couple more photographs that show this building with the massive bottle on top. Now this bottle was close to 50 feet tall, if not taller. I couldn't find an exact measurement on it, but I was able to find some depictions and photographs that show this bottle on top. And I was even able to locate one that show that this bottle was actually electrified. And at night, this entire tower and this entire building would light up and would basically be a nightlight for the streets of Baltimore, something like a moon tower. So I found that to be very, very interesting and just a really awesome detail about Baltimore that I haven't heard anyone talk about before.
of the old world photographs, you can see that the streets are covered in dirt and mud. But in other parts of Baltimore, you can see that the streets are actually paved in red brick. So it's really interesting to note all the different styles throughout Baltimore when looking at these old world photographs. You can sort of tell by looking at the photograph what part of the reset of the city that they are in, whether it was before the Great Fire or after the Great Fire and they had to conduct the rebuild. And it's just really interesting to see all the dichotomies that are established when looking at the oldest photographs of Baltimore. Old World Baltimore had a vast array of different beautiful theaters, including the Baltimore Hippodrome, which was very popular at the time. Now, as I mentioned before, the harbor in Baltimore was one of the most important areas, and it had a lot of jobs. And you can tell by this photograph here, all of the different equipment and antiqua tech and awesome devices that were being used on the different harbors and piers in Baltimore. Now we also have different inventions coming out of Baltimore, including this double decker electric rail car that ran on the Baltimore Railway. We also have different mausoleums and different burial sites for important people who were living in Baltimore, including the poet Edgar Allan Poe, who was buried in Baltimore. So Old World Baltimore was a very interesting place. It has a lot of Old World context that when we compare to other cities, it really seems to fit this overarching narrative that maybe all of these old world constructions had something in common. We can see the awesome piers and we can see Romanesque, Moorish and different influences all throughout the city lending to a melting pot of different cultures. So overall, I just wanted to share these images of Baltimore with you and hopefully any of these have sparked your interest and I'd love to hear any of your thoughts or comments down below. Everything you have to say helps inspire me and gives me food for thought for my next videos. And there's a lot of abandoned tunnels in the forest surrounding Baltimore. Apparently, there were a lot of different pathways that were created throughout the woodlands to get to Baltimore. And this includes different archways and tunnelways that were created at a great expense and then eventually abandoned. And now they basically sit desolute in the middle of these forests. So it's just really interesting to note. And it's unique to see images like this where these are from the early 1900s, late 1800s, and you can see these abandoned tunnels and they're already very overgrown and they seem very out of place. And this is reminiscent with many other surrounding states like Pennsylvania, where you'll also find tunnels like this and different railways and different pathways that were created and seem to be abandoned many years before.
So to complete our checklist of an old world city, we finally have the old world style stadium. And this is a stadium that's basically built with an earthen mound or a mound of earth that at one end looks like it is cut off and is installed a Romanesque entrance with pillars and large archways. Now, this would be interesting if by itself it only stood in Baltimore. However, we have stadiums that were built exactly like this all around the United States, including other cities that were said to have a vast history with the Native Americans, including Chicago. And I've made other videos where I point out these stadiums, but this one is just like those, a massive earth mound with a Romanesque entrance. And it's interesting that all of these old world cities, especially the ones that seem to fit these weird narratives, all have these same features, including large post offices and these underground tunnels that stem from the middle of the city and these stadiums that are built out of earth mounds. And this stadium, Memorial Stadium, actually had a plane crash occur there during the playoffs of the NFL in 1977. So talk about bad luck. But I'm going to conclude the video there. We've shown a lot of different images today, so I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments down below about Old World Baltimore. Anything in this video that stood out to you, I would love to hear about it. Nothing is too out of the box. We can all discuss it. Let's keep it proper. Let's get some new knowledge out there. Please share this video if you liked it. This was a very time consuming video. And usually when I research the old world cities, I try to be as thorough as possible. So I wanna present everything I can. And I just thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I would really appreciate if you hit that thumbs up and I will see you on the next one.